everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy. In this video, we will build the classic tap bar pattern into our Ionic 4 application. And we will not use the starting template because uh, those pre-made solutions are great, but you have to have a good understanding about the routing and the concept of the different tabs and the router outlet. So we will go through all of this in detail to build a simple app with a tab bar, um, with a details page that we can reach and um, just in general understand the pattern of the tab bar. And also this video is part of the Ionic 4 migration course inside my Ionic Academy. So if you're not yet a member, make sure to check out the ionicacademy.com, um, perhaps somewhere below or up here, uh, we will see. Anyway, let's do this. I've started a blank new Ionic 4 application uh, currently using the beta 13, I think, uh, but hopefully um, there won't be any big changes um, to this package anymore. Um, so let's go ahead by creating a few pages. And first of all, we need a page tabs, which is uh, just like Ionic 3, uh, basically the base view for our tab. -up. So then we got tab 1 and tab 2, of course, because we need multiple tabs. And then I'll also create a details page that we will later uh, use to um, navigate, to uh, push it to the view stack basically and see how we can integrate this into our tab bar navigation as well. So um, the general tab bar isn't that hard, but adding more pages or combining it with a site menu and different uh, navigation templates, that's when it gets tricky. All right. Um, finally, another cool thing uh, using the Ionic CLI, which also uses the Angular CLI, um, is creating a nice little module um, right inside our tabs folder. So if you inspect your pages, now you see that we got the folders and we already got the module for the tabs page, but we also want a tabs routing module. And that's what we're going to create. And we will also pass in dash dash flat, uh, which will directly edit into this folder and not create a new folder. And also we actually don't need the uh, spec file for testing. We could have skipped this uh, also everywhere else. But now we have the new routing module, which will um, have the routes for our tabba. And also I'll get rid of the home page. So you see uh, completely getting started uh, again. So let's close this and close, I said, and close. All right, so automatically all the tabs are added to our app routing module, uh, which is what we definitely don't want to. So home is anyway gone. And for now, the only thing we need is that for the basic path that we navigate to, we want to load our tabs page module. And this tabs page module will then hold all the further routes for the tab bar and the further navigation. So now we're moving to this place. Also, um, perhaps now already a word on routing. So your app starts at the app component level where we got the ion app and inside the ion router outlet. Um, this is pretty much the same like the Angular router, um, just with uh, some additions for animations and stuff like this. So now our app starts, we navigate to the empty page and this child will be loaded and displayed right here in the first ion router outlet in our app. And now we can use, of course, more router outlets inside our app and that's what we will do inside our tab bar navigation. And therefore, let's move on to our tabs routing module. And in here we can start by defining also some routes uh, roots and then let's see first of all we have the parent which is for example path tabs and the component in this case is simply the tabs page so this tabs page will then in a second host the ion tabs uh, which will look somehow like this and then you will have an ion tab in here and perhaps a second tab. So that's basically the parent for our routing and this is the component we path in. So now this will also have a few children 
And those are what we're going to display inside our tab bar navigation. So if we're on tab one and want to display tab one, um, we first of all have to specify a path. Uh, let's say this is tab one. This could be anything, could be anything. You just have to remember it and use it in the right places. And then we pass in an outlet, which we also name tab one. And we will see the connection to the actual tab bar outlet in a second. And the component related to this page is now tab one page. Um, you've seen lazy loading in action in here, which is called label load children and then the path and the hashtag. But this is right now not yet working for tabs and the site menu. Perhaps it is fixed in the final version. I'm not sure. Um, but for now, we have to use the component syntax in here. And in order to fix an error that we might receive, uh, we also have to add the tab page module for all the pages we use in the tab routing right here. Um, and I think details, no, let's skip this for now. Okay, so we got the path for tab one. And of course, we also need the tab two which will have a different outlet and of course will be tab two page. Okay, so now we got the roots and our ng module actually should look a bit different. We need the router module, hopefully the import works. Great, it works. And then we're not calling um, uh, for root anymore, but because we're already in the child uh, navigation routing module, we use for child with the roots we have defined up there. And then we don't need any ex uh, declarations, only exports the router module. Okay, so that's the setup for the tabs routing. Um, this is enough to show two different tabs with the tab one and the tab two page. And now we have to create the actual view. So let's go to the tabs page and we got the ion tabs already. And the ion tab, let's give this a label, tab one, also an icon, um, perhaps sunny. And now things get a bit more interesting. So we need an href that we will navigate to when we click on this link. And the syntax for this might look a bit strange now. So let me do this real quick. Okay, there we go. Um, inside the browser navigation bar, this URL actually looks a bit ugly, um, but it's what we need right now. Again, perhaps this might change in the future. And the, this path simply says navigate to tabs, which is the parent component. And then what we want to display is the uh, outlet tab one uh, with a path tab one. So. A bit tricky syntax, as I said, and I'm pretty sure the first one, the outlet, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then inside of each ion tab, we got again the ion router outlet. So that's what we've seen at the topmost level of our app and we can use it in here or anywhere else again. And because we give this router outlet the name tab one, uh, we can load this tab one page into the tab one outlet using the tab one path. So if this would be anything, then I think we would have to use anything right here. Perhaps it's also switched. I'm not completely sure at this moment. So let's just keep this to tab one. All right, this is one tab. And then we go for the second one. We name it moon and we use the outlet and the path of the second tab and name it tab two. So that's all we need in here. And let's also add a little bit uh, something useful that you might need. Um, so ion select could be applied to the tab and then tab two selected. Uh, there we go. So this would be an example how to catch an event uh, of clicking on the tab bar, tab to select it. Just a super quick example. Okay, let's save this and let's see. So we're updating and hopefully I had no errors. Um, 
Okay, I on tap, I on tap, I on tap, I on tap. Um, okay, of course, it never works on the first try, but perhaps on the second. Um, well, 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 mm, that's not exactly what we want. So it's good that this happened right now because I forgot a little detail. Um, our app is navigating to the blank path and for some reason we only see tab one. Um, the thing is, we're actually not navigating to tabs. So what we can do is if at this point inside the routine we encounter the empty path, we redirect to um, the path we have already seen, which is tabs, tab one, tab one. Um, this is also basically like saying um, we always start on tab one. We could also use tab two, then we would always uh, start there and path match full. So really, we only want this to happen if the route uh, is empty. Uh, let's see again if the redirect is working now. Um, hello. Hello, please refresh. Hello. Um, hello. No refresh today. What's wrong? Why do you not refresh anymore? Mm, come on. Oh, jeez. Let's see if I can get this fixed. It's actually very good that this issue uh, happened right now um, because we forgot something. Um, so not only did we forget about the redirect, we also forgot to actually use the tabs routing module. So therefore we need to go to our tabs module and instead of using um, the routes that are already defined here, what we're going to do is use the tabs routing module, of course. So this should be hopefully all the magic we need and perhaps saving all the files might also make some sense. Um, and then if the recompile strikes again, uh, we should see that the URL will change from the empty one to tabs, tab one, tab one, just like the redirect that we specified. And we see we're on tab one and we can also go to tab two. We see that tab two selected. Uh, so for some proof, tab two content, and of course, tab one content. But you should have already seen that we got two different uh, tabs in here. And therefore, um, you see. So now you could even open the app directly with this URL. So empty URL, directly navigate to tab two, tab two, and then we're here again. All right, so that's already pretty nice. The basic tab bar is implemented. Now we want to use a details page that we, I think, added in the beginning. Did we? Yes. Um, to push it in two different ways. Um, so we want to be able to push it above the uh, tab bar. So we don't want to see the tab bar anymore. Um, a bit like a mole. Perhaps you would also use a mole in that case, but anyway, um, might also make sense. Perhaps you also have a login page before the actual tabs. Uh, in that case, you would have to change your routing in here. So the empty path would be the login and then you would go to tabs, uh, whatever. But for now, what we're going to do is simply add um, another route here, which is details. And this should load, uh, come on, details, details module and then we got details 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 module details page module okay now we can navigate to slash details but we also want to navigate to it from a specific tab inside our app then you have to go to the tabs routing module again so good thing is we've split up all the things 
otherwise you would have all the routes in this one routing module i think it's a bit cleaner like this so if you want to be able to navigate from tab one to the details page you could simply add another path right here tab one details still we're in the same outlet we want to display it in the outlet tab one and we want to use the details page again if we use the component in here make sure to edit right here as well but the module file not the page itself and also you could also have this for tab 2 and the tab 2 outlet um, you can use the components many times so not just in one entry all right we got it in there so now we only need uh, two more buttons to trigger our functions so ion button expand full and on click we call open uh, details global so above everything inside our application uh, open details without top bar and then the second one open details within top bar open details let's call this in tabs so use some uh, is it called talking names or speaking names? I'm not completely sure, um, but they're always good anyway. All right, um, we got open details global and this should use our private router. So if you rely on the Angular router right now, you're actually a bit more safe uh, to the upcoming changes that still might happen during the beta. Um, because I think the Angular router is not going to change. So use navigate or navigate by URL. It's uh, basically the same. You can have a bit of a different syntax. Um, the open details global uses slash details because we use this path uh, with nothing else. And the open details in tabs uses now the tabs and now it gets even more tricky tab one tab one slash details okay this confirms my theory from before um the first name is actually the outlet name and then we got the path so i hope you understand how the routing concept works a bit more by now and let's save this and the last thing that is missing um, is actually if we push a new page to the stack uh, with Ionic 3, we had automatically this back button at the top and now we need ion buttons slot start or end wherever you want them and then ion back button and that's enough to show the back button on the details page if we're navigating to it uh, from another page. So again, we're inside the top bar navigation, we see both of the tabs. We can go to details and the top bar is hidden as we're on slash details. So no tab parent is available. Or we can also open the tab details inside the tab one outlet with the past tab one details and simply go back and stay within our top bar navigation. All right, um, that's it for today. Um, that's how you implement a top bar navigation using Ionic 4 and the Angular router. It's actually pretty easy if you understand the basic concepts, uh, how the routing works, how the router in general works with the outlets, the outlet names, the path, the parents, um, the module files. So try to truly understand how it works um, before you start your apps using the tabs template and after a few hours you uh, lose interest in Ionic because it's so hard and you don't understand what's going on if you want to add new pages. All right, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you don't eat my microphone, but instead um, subscribe to this channel and also check out the ionicacademy.com, which is my own online coding school for you to learn Ionic in the best possible way. So I'd love to see you inside. Have a great day and take care.